Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we'll be looking at how to create a snow effect with HTML canvas element and JavaScript. In front of us, we have the final product. And if you'd like to see how this is done, then let's begin. Now we'll start off with the file structure. And in here we have index.html, index.js, and style.css files. And also we have a folder called images and we have a one image inside of it. Uh, let's begin with the index.html page. So this is a pretty straightforward uh, HTML page. Uh, we'll add a link to our style sheet. We'll change the title. Uh, we'll also add some uh, containers to our body tag. Uh, very important, obviously, to add the canvas element inside of it. We'll have a section with some div, and we'll have some text inside of it, make it snow. And also very important to add the uh, link to our uh, JavaScript file at the end of the uh, body tag. So that's about it for the index.html and now we can move on to the style.css. So with the uh, style.css there's nothing fancy going on here. We just have a background image uh, attached to our HTML. Then we have a Z index on the canvas element and we're styling the text a little bit so it can look uh, just a tiny bit better. Um, that's pretty much it about uh, style.css. We can move on to the uh, interesting part now which is index.js. Now before we move into the JavaScript we're going to turn on our live server. You can do this by going down to the uh, live server icon here, or you can, uh, if you're a Mac, you can press Command Shift plus P and then type in live server. And uh, I should also point out that this is a plugin that you can easily install through the uh, Visual Studio Code uh, extension sections. Now we can head over to the index.js file. First, we need to grab a reference to our canvas element. Then we can go ahead and get the canvas get context 2D. So we get the context from the canvas. Then we'll create a few variables here, for example the particles on screen and we'll assign uh, the number 245. This basically means the number of particles we'll see on the screen at a given time. You can always change this later. Uh, then we'll create the particles array, we'll assign an empty array to it and we'll have the W and H uh, properties which will basically be the width and the height. And also I'm assigning um, values to it. At the same time, I'm assigning values to the canvas width and height using window.innerWidth and window.innerHeight. Next, we can move on to the random number generator function, which will take two values, a minimum and maximum value, and it will output a, a random number from those two values. Moving on to the client resize uh, method, we will be using this so when the client resizes the window, we can change the width and the height of the canvas, and also we'll need our uh, WNH variables when we do some calculations later and I'm assigning an event listener here on resize and I'm assigning the client resize function to it. Coming up on the create snowflakes method here we have a for loop and we're filling up the particles array with some values for example the x and y axis this will be the x and y axis of the snowflakes uh, we have a math random times the width and the height here uh, next we have the opacity which is also a random number between 0, 0.0 and 1.0 uh, next we'll have the speed of the x-axis and the speed of the y-axis they will be also randomly generated and at, la at last we have the radius which will also be random so we have different sizes of uh, flakes on the screen uh, obviously these values can be changed and you can play around with them uh, when we finish now it's time to draw the snowflake with the draw snowflake method but before we do that, I would like to add some gradient to the flake, uh, moving from uh, white to a light bluish color. And we can do this with the create radial gradient method, which takes a few parameters, like the uh, x and y coordinates of the start of the circle, the radius of the start of the circle, the x and y coordinates at the end of the circle, and the radius at the end of the circle. After we create our radial gradient, we need to add some color to it using add color stop, which basically takes two values. The first value is a value between 0.0, .0 and 1.0, and this represents the position between the start and the end of the gradient. And the second value is a CSS color value to display at that exact position. So for example here, we are uh, at position 0, we are adding a white color, uh, at position point 0.8 we are adding a bluish color, then it will move to a light bluish color, and also uh, to our RGBA filter we are adding a uh, randomly generated opacity which we generated in our create snowflakes method. Next we will start our path and we can now create a circular arc which will be basically our snowflake and we do this with the arc method which takes six parameters which and those are 
the x and y or the horizontal horizontal and vertical coordinate of the arc's center then we have the radius we have the angle of which the arc will start the angle of which the arc will end and we have a boolean parameter which indicates whether the arc to be drawn uh, clockwise or uh, counterclockwise next we'll set the color to fill our drawing pattern and we'll use the fill method uh, to fill our drawing path for the move snowflakes method here we are incrementing the x and y position of the snowflakes with the x and y speed so on the x axis the snowflake will move either from the right to the left or from the left to the right and on the y axis it will just move straight down so when the value of the y axis is greater than the inner height of our window we're basically resetting that uh, snowflake to the top of the screen so it will actually be off screen since we're giving a minus 50 value here and we're giving a random position of our x axis next we can create an update snowfall method which will basically we'll call it with an interval so for example every so on uh, seconds or milliseconds we we'll call this function so we can basically make the snowflake uh, move along our screen so here we'll uh, clear the canvas call the draw snowflakes and the move snowflakes methods and we're gonna set an interval and we're gonna pass in the update snowfall method and we'll set a value of 50 uh, milliseconds and for the last part we're just gonna call create snowflake method so that's about it you can still play around with the values and maybe get a different effect i uh, hope this was interesting and maybe you learned something new today i thank you for watching uh, subscribe if you're not and i'll see you in the next one